from Seven Sports, the high school red zone. Here's Pete Yannity. Hi, everybody, and welcome in week 11 in the high school red zone, the final night of the regular season. Still a whole lot of business to be settled as far as region champions go, as far as playoff seating goes, and in some cases, as far as rivalry bragging rights goes. So let's begin there with the annual showdown between Dorman and Spartanburg as the Cavaliers took to the field turf at the home of the Vikings, looking to extend their winning streak in the series over Spartanburg to five straight. What a game this turns out to be, and Todd Summers has the story. Dorman on the road taking on rival Spartanburg, and this one lives up to the hype. After a scoreless first quarter, the action heats up early in the second quarter. Raheem Jeter calls his own number, goes straight ahead for the one-yard touchdown. Vikings up 7-0. On its next possession, Dorman comes right back as Will Black goes straight ahead for a seven-yard touchdown game tied at seven. Still tied at seven, Demarius Foster breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage, then shows off his straight line speed as he races 33 yards for the Cavalier touchdown. Dorman leads 14-7. Under two minutes to play in the first half, the Cavs tally seven more as Hudson tally hooks up with Tyson Rogers for a 58-yard touchdown. Dorman leads 21-7 at the break. Early fourth quarter, it's a 24-7 game when the Vikings come storming back. Quarterback Raheem Jeter takes the snap and goes off the left side for a two-yard touchdown, his second of the night, to cut the Cavs' lead to 24-14. Just under four minutes to play in the game, Vikings running back Dreek Carter goes off the right side and just crosses the goal line for a one-yard touchdown as Spartanburg cuts the Dorman lead to 24-21. Spartanburg gets the ball back just under a minute to play in the game. Raheem Jeter splits two Dorman defenders, and Andrew Danton makes a great outstretched grab and keeps on running. 62 yards for the go-ahead touchdown. The Vikings lead for the first time in the second half, 28-24. Dorman gets the ball back, but on the first play from scrimmage, Hudson Talley's pass is picked off by Jacob Madison, and Spartanburg runs out the clock from there to secure its first region title since 2015. Final score, 28-24. Fighting is what they do. They pay the price, and because paying that price, they had something to pull out. They had an investment at the end. Super proud of those kids. They never flinched. We played terrible the first half. We locked in play much better second. Practice it every week, Coach I said before the game started that we want anyone to go in going that way, and that's how it happened. This is spelt with showing everybody what we're doing. In Spartanburg, for the High School Red Zone, I'm Todd Summers. Vikings have their highest win total in a number of seasons, going back uh, to when they won 10 games in 2016. This is Burns going at it against Wade Hampton. Colin Imhoff taking it down the near side later on. All the way to the one yard line on the receiving end and Landon Thompson able to get it in from one yard out for a Burns team that goes 9 and 0 all time against Wade Hampton. They drop a 24th consecutive and Burns first meeting against the general since 2015 rolls 56 to 8. Region 15A the title is on the line as the Hannah Yellow Jackets unbeaten and trying to add to their 16 game regular season winning streak took on the Hillcrest Rams in Simpsonville. Third quarter, Avery McFadden. Rams had the lead. McFadden would love to help him build it. And there he goes. 92 yards on the kickoff return. I'll tell you, Rams have just quietly been lurking. They had some bumps in the road early, but they've been as tough as anyone over the past six weeks. Later in the third, Bennett Judy, 65 yards. There's Jalen Neal. And Neal able to keep his balance and run away from Yellow Jackets defenders. Judy capped off the fun. Rams roll on to a 44 to 21 victory. Anthony Freight gets a Gatorade bath on a chilly night. They're the region champs. He has a great football team, you know, and, and that's a championship quality team over there. Coach Tone does a great job and, um, you know, the ball bounced away a little bit tonight and uh, we're thankful for it. You know, we're excited. Uh, we had the best student section in the nation, in my opinion. I mean, great, great fans. Could not be more thankful for our fans. They come out every game and support us. So we're excited for that. And uh, we're excited to just play on our home turf and uh, get the job done. It had been a tight series. They'd split the past six games. The Hillcrest gets the win. Their last region championship was 2017 before a Friday night triumph against the Yellow Jackets. Elsewhere in Region 15A, Malden and Mann scoot Watson trying to 
finish what has been a nice season for his team, really becoming more competitive. He's done a nice job there since taking over, but not a whole lot to do against the Mavs D. Xavier Simmons plugging things up. Embry Watson late third quarter makes it 48 to 20. And when it's done, uh, Mavericks cruise on to the 55 28 victory. That's 10 straight in the series. All time, these teams have split 40 meetings. Gaffney, Region 3 5A championship. Outright would be theirs with a win over Fort Mill. Grayson Loftus looking for Tyler Smith. What a season Smith is having. Entered the game with nearly 1,100 yards rushing, 21 total touchdowns. He would add to that. You saw him down the sideline for 24 yards. That one gets into the end zone, and the Tribe will roll into the 5A Upper State playoffs unbeaten at 10-0 with a 48-14 victory against Fort Mill. Greenwood wrapped up the Region 2-4A crown last week. They made the trek up to Spartanburg County, taking on Boiling Springs. Eagles trying to close it out at 8-1 and, and snap a two-game skid against the Bulldogs. There's Jeremiah Thomas. First play from scrimmage for Boiling Springs. 80 yards later, it's a 7-0 lead. But Dalen Rapley and crew coming back. That's a 15-yard touchdown to tie it at 7. Lounge still later goes in from 12 yards out. And the Eagles, 8-1, and one, feeling good heading into the 4A Upper State playoffs. And they knock off Boiling Springs 45 to 21. When we come back, could the Daniel Lions roar again? Oh, they had to do so in the den of the BHP Bears. We'll show you that action and so much more as we roll on in the high school red zone.